Coach Garland, you guys had you had your first All American. You as a head coach, correct? Here in at a, Virginia. Yeah. Here, at, here at UVA. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I guess first I as a head coach. No, you're right. Yeah, as a head coach. As a head coach. You're right. Uh, okay, so uh, you guys have a Heinrich at a 174 All American. Correct. All right, and you guys are building. You're trying to build towards you know what what, what you know at other places you've been like Cornell. Okay, like other places that you've coached at and been around, and you've been in the national finals. What's it going to take to get the attitude here, more more Chris Heinrichs and, and, and guys like that to uh, have multiple All-Americans next year? Man, that's the, that's, the, that's the question, isn't it? I think every coach in the country other than Tom Brands is, at, is asking that same question right now, and I'm sure he, he's even asked himself that a few times. Is how do, how do we get everybody to be just like that guy? I mean, the, the special thing about Chris Heinrichs to start is that he's an he's a extremely focused kid. Um, he had a 3.4 GPA. He was uh, he's an econ major here, which is one of our toughest majors. He just got a B plus in the toughest econ course that they offer here um, this summer. Works out every day, twice a day, if not three times a day. You know, pretty much does everything everything right that, that I see. So it's like, man, I tell you, you know, how do we get everybody doing that? Well, we have other guys that work just as hard, do all the same things, like guys like Sean Harris, Danny Gonzer, the guys doing those right things. Um, you know, Nick Nelson. Nick Nelson was in the round of 12. He's a kid that. So he's a kid that does everything right too, but he was one match short, right? So, you know, how, how does that happen? How do, how do we get it rolling where we get everybody doing that? I think the key is getting everybody to believe in themselves like Chris does. One of the things about Chris too is he's very, very confident. He's very confident in his abilities. And, I mean, people don't realize he was, I think, eight and six going after his first semester in school here. Next thing you know, less than a year later, he's an All-American. I mean, he made a very big jump in a short amount of time. But, you know, obviously the fuel of that is the number one, the work ethic base, but also it's believing in himself, buying into the system. He does everything we teach. He does, he, you know, pretty much everything, all the basic core concepts we teach, he's used in his matches while going live. So, you know, how do you get each kid to buy in to the technique and how do you get each kid to apply it to not just drilling? Because we've got guys that drill everything we show perfectly, but how do you get it to translate over to a match? It's a constant work in progress. Um, you know, we, we talk to the guys, we drill, we, we have you know, a five pillar structure where we where we have freshmen come in now and we're doing, okay, these five areas for the first five weeks of the season, this is what you're going to be working on and nothing else. And so we, we have ways of beating things in the guys' heads, but at the end of the day, you know, you know as well as I do that on Saturday when that when the lights are on and when that whistle blows, how do you get everybody to execute that way in, in a match with total confidence in their ability? I don't know. You know, I think I think we're still working on it. I'd like to think that uh, we're getting a lot better at it. I mean, geez, we had seven national qualifiers out of ten weights this year. Um, we had uh, two years ago we broke the wins record with 18 dual meet wins. We've had so many good things happen, but at the same time we've got a long way to go. We we, we need to instead of be a top five ranked team, we need to actually. We need to, not even top 25 team at Nationals. We want to be top 10. And Maryland did it this year, and that, that was um, really it was a very big motivating factor with our staff. So you know what? We're right there with them. They're doing a great job. We know what. So are we. We can be there. I mean, uh, Coach McCoy is an awesome coach, and uh, I don't pretend to c compare myself to him, but what I can, can tell you is that we have similar types of guys, talent level and work ethic-wise, and I guess it, if they can do it, so can we. And look at Old Dominion with a guy in the national finals. I mean, we were, we were tied with them going in the last match, we lost that match, and and I believe it was double overtime. Uh, so, <clears throat> I mean, like, like I said, we're right there with those teams. There's no reason why we can't do it. Uh, we just have to keep working. We have to keep making sure that um, we hold everybody accountable. We, we make sure that the culture, that the guys are taking over with that culture in the room and, um, and you know, not having mishaps off the mat and keep doing what we're doing in the classroom, which has been very, very good, and, and not have any slip-ups. It takes complete focus. I talk about three pillars with my incoming freshman. Okay, you got academics first, you got your training situation, and then you have focus. Okay, well I always say the focus of the third one is you gotta be able to stay on track, man. In college, there's a trillion things that can just to just get you off track. You've got girlfriends, you've got social life, you've got parties, you've got you've got a lot of things, uh, other events. I mean, you've got just there's a lot of organizations on campus. This is a social campus. I relationships can tell. is a big thing, and building relationships in any part of your life. So we encourage it to a certain degree, obviously. But at the same point, you got to know when to say when. You can find trouble on any campus, you know, but here in particular, you can find it if you're looking for it. You got to be smart enough to be able to walk that road. I've got a proverb now from the Bible that I have posted. I just recently posted last week in the, in the bulletin board or locker room. You know, basically, essentially what it says is keep your head focused straight ahead. Keep your eyes fixated before you don't swerve left and right and keep your foot from evil. What that means is 
it's very simple. I mean, it doesn't take a rocket science to translate that, okay? You're walking this path. There's a, every day there's roads you can walk down. There's left and right or straight. If you start going right, that may seem cool, seem cool at the time, but it's going to lead you down a bad path. You may go left too, swerve left, because you get distracted for a second. Well, it takes you all that time to get back on the right track. It takes so much less work just to stay on the right track. It actually takes more work for you to screw up and then try to fix it and come all the way back full circle. Just stay straight. Keep your eyes straight, fixated ahead, and keep your foot from evil. It's not that hard. You know, and, and we've all been suspect to it. I don't want to get on a soapbox either. Trust me. I've made my fair share of mistakes, and I've certainly um, been distracted. But I, I'll tell you, if I've learned anything, it's that focus is so, it can solve anything. I mean, you just, I guess it sounds cliche, but um, you'd be surprised how many people, not just in these kids' lives, but in the adult world. I mean, it's the same thing with me with my job. You've got to stay focused. You can't be distracted by other things. You've got to make sure you set short-term goals, long-term goals. Set a plan in place to reach those goals and then stick to that plan. Have the, have the stones to stick to that plan, the discipline and the mental toughness to stick to that plan. And that's another thing I talk about with, with, with uh, when I run camps, I talk to the kids about those three things. You know, setting goals is the easy part. Getting the plan in place is a little bit tougher, and then sticking to the plan is the hardest part. Again, that focus. Sticking to the plan is always the hardest part. It's very simple to come into my office and sit down and say, Coach, I want to work on this, or what do I need to do to be national champ? I get that one all the time. Oh, really? Well, it's not rocket science. You know, you got to do this, 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 and this. The question is, do you want to actually do that? You know, parents, I go in homes all the time. I probably do just as many, if not more, home visits than any other coach in the country. I mean, I'm everywhere. My wife can tell you. I, I get on the road constantly. And I'll tell you what, the number one question I get is, well, you know, well, what do you do? Well, <laughs> it's a series of questions. Well, what, what do you do in the summer? I get that question all the time. Well, we're not playing Monopoly. We're not uh, hanging out, you know. Uh, watching big screen, watching movies with popcorn. We're freaking working out. Yeah, well, what do you do in the off season? Well, we go to University Nationals. We can bring a team to Field of Juniors. We had 11 guys in the All America round two years ago. We do a lot of things, man. We do a lot of things. That's the answer to that question. We're always looking to better our program and to better our athletes. You know, that's that's not a line of BS. That's a fact. So for them, they, almost when parents ask me that, I guess they have to ask me that, but it's kind of like, are you kidding me? Are you being serious right now? Don't you know the answer to that? Everybody in the country that takes their job seriously, and I take it very dang seriously, my job, we're, we're freaking working. We're doing what we need to do. Um, and then, you know, the other series is like, well, you know, what's your schedule like? And you just like, you f okay, uh, what's my schedule like? And then you break it out. You're like, last year we wrestled Oklahoma State, uh, Penn State, Illinois, and Wisconsin before November was even out. Is that good enough? You want to look at them and say, is that okay? Is that okay with you? Yeah, I mean, obviously we have a good schedule. What do you, again, what do you think we're doing? I mean, that, it's, again, it, it's not... It's not hard to find good competition. Co you know, it's not hard to go to Midlands or go to Southern Scuffle or go to Vegas. I mean, there's only a, wrestling's such a small world. There's only so many tournaments you can go down, and and I think. Um, I guess maybe I went off on a little bit of a rant. <laughs> you know, like, I, I, get, I, get the, I guess for me, 10 years in, in, the, in this profession, getting those questions every single time, it's like, look, give me some questions like this. I'm a, what are you going to do for us? What can you do for me? I mean, seriously, all we do is we go in there and we sell ourselves, and guess what? We've proven ourselves or else we wouldn't be in the position we're at. What I want to see when I go into home now, and I'm, it's refreshing when I get this, is when a kid sits down and goes, Coach, this is what I can do for you. This is what I can bring to the table, coach. This is my talent level. This is my work ethic. Fact, not just what I'm saying to you. This is what I do all the time, not, well, you know, I'm taking a break this summer. No, no, no. I'm going to Fargo. I'm going to Olympic Training Center. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm lifting. I'm going to all the folks, folk style dual meet tournaments. I mean, John Fousey, one of my favorite kids in the world, a kid we just brought in from Line Mountain, Pennsylvania, a state champ. He, he, you know what he did this summer? He wrestled in every single Scholastic folk style event there was. He didn't go to Fargo because he got hurt, but he was at everything. He got like, I don't know, I want to say like 30 matches in this summer. That's what I want to hear. What can you, I, I know what we're going to bring to the table. What can you do for us? And that's what I think now since we brought in three top 12 recruiting classes, number three class, number six class, because we have sort of proven ourselves on our standpoint, which meaning kids obviously believe in what we're doing or else they wouldn't be coming here. University of Virginia sells itself. You saw it. Or else we wouldn't, you know, obviously we wouldn't be able to bring in those kids. So we have that down packed. Now, now what I want to hear from kids is Coach Garland, this is what I'm going to bring to the table for your program. I'm not just going to say, well, what, what are you going to offer me? What kind of scholarship are you going to give me? What I'm, what I'm going to tell you, Coach, is I'm going to kill myself for you. I'm going to do this. I'm not going to get in trouble. I'm not going to be distracted. I'm going to be focused and I'm going to make the proper life choices that you want me to make. So I'm a pr productive member of the University of Virginia community. That's what I want to hear. Break. <laughs>